Hi friends, my name is Akhil Ahmed and in this particular video tutorial I will show you how to migrate data from QuickBooks to SQL Server and vice versa. So the agenda of today's video tutorial is that first we will migrate data from QuickBooks to SQL Server and then we will migrate data from SQL Server to QuickBooks. So without wasting further time, let's jump to the demo. So for today's video, we will be using the SSIS data flow components from Devart. They provide a wide variety of components to migrate data from n number of sources into the n number of different destinations. For example, you can migrate data for PostgreSQL, MySQL, Oracle, QuickBooks, Snowflake, etc. If you want to test their component, then you can download the 30 days trial version. And if you want to purchase their license, then you can get an additional 10% discount using the coupon code learn SSIS 10. So let's see how we can migrate data from QuickBooks to SQL Server first. So I have the QuickBooks here and uh, this is my test company test QA. Okay. So we will be migrating the data from this QuickBooks on the left side. You can see the options for different kind of tables like uh, in the sales. You can see the invoices customers inside the transactions. You can see the chart of accounts. Okay. So for example, all the accounts data you can see here. So right now we have 33 records in the accounts table. Okay. So here we have data for different kind of things like for customers, for expenses, suppliers, etc. Okay. QuickBooks is one of the widely used accounting software used in the US. So sometimes we need to migrate data from QuickBooks to SQL Server and vice versa. Okay. So let's see how we can migrate data from QuickBooks to SQL Server. So I have the SQL Server instance as well and uh, I got the Devart database. So we will migrate data from that uh, QuickBooks into the Devart database into a new table. So let me open the Visual Studio. So this is my Visual Studio that I will be using today to migrate the data. So first of all, we will migrate data from QuickBooks to SQL Server. So to migrate the data, we will be using the data flow task. So we can just drag and drop the data flow task into the control flow window. All right. Now I can call this particular data flow task as quick books to SQL server. Okay. And I can double click on this one. Now because our source is the QuickBooks, so we can type QuickBooks here. So we got three type of components from QuickBooks, Devart QuickBooks online source, lookup and destination. Because we want to fetch the data from the QuickBooks, so we can simply drag and drop the source component here into the data flow task. All right, so the source component has been added to the data flow. So I can right click and configure this one. Now from the connection manager, I can click on the drop down and I can click on create new connection manager. So this will give us a option to create a new connection manager. The connection manager will be used to connect to the QuickBooks. So here we simply need to click on the web login. So it's trying to connect to the QuickBooks. So it's saying authorization is successful because I'm already logged in with my account. So that's why it automatically detected that there is a connection. So, so the authorization is successful, which is good. So I can simply click on test connection and you can see that successfully connected. So that's great. So we did not need to write anything here, any code. We just click on a button and we were connected. So that's good. Now I can click on OK. So uh, we are connected to the QuickBooks on the left side. You can see all the different tables from the QuickBooks. So these are the tables. So if you want to uh, preview the data from a table, so you simply need to click on that particular table and simply drag it into the query option. So it will automatically generate the select statement for that particular table. So right now it has generated the select statement for the account table. If you want to see the name of the columns, then you can click on this particular plus icon and you can see all the available columns in a table. Now, if you want to preview the data, so you can click on preview option and it will fetch the data at real time from the account table. So this is good. It's displaying all the available data. So that's great. So I can close this one. You can also use the user defined variable if you have any or the system variable to make the query dynamic. So uh, we are good here right now. It will fetch all data from the accounts table. So I can click OK. Now we want to write the data into the SQL server. So we can use the OLEDB destination here. So I can simply drag and drop the OLEDB destination into the data flow task. 
and then I can connect the QuickBooks source with the OLEDB destination and then I can configure the OLEDB destination here. Click new to create a new connection manager. We have a connection to the DevArt database so I will choose this particular connection manager then I can click OK. From data access mode I will select table or view fast load because it does the bulk insert and then I can click on new. So it will actually generate the create table statement for the account table because we have selected the account table from the QuickBooks. So I can give the table name as account and then I can click OK. Now if you go to the mappings then the input columns have been automatically mapped with the destination columns so which is great. If any column is not mapped then you can map them manually as well. So I can click OK. So our package is ready to migrate data from QuickBooks to the SQL Server. So I can click on the start button and it should execute the SSIS package. Alright so you can see that the migration of data from QuickBooks to SQL Server is successful. So I can go back to the SQL Server and I can refresh the database. So you can see an account table here. If I select the data from the account table then it contains all the 33 records which we saw in the QuickBooks. Okay 33 records so which is great. So the migration of data from QuickBooks to SQL Server is successful which is great. Alright I can see that the data is successfully migrated. Now let's do the reverse what we did now like let's migrate the data from SQL Server to QuickBooks. Okay. So for that particular thing what I will do I will stop the execution of this particular package. So we got a customer table here uh, which contains one record for John Doe. Okay. So uh, we will be inserting one additional record to this particular table at SQL Server and then we will migrate data from SQL Server to QuickBooks. So if I open the QuickBooks, uh, so inside the customers, there is a customers option here. So inside the customers right now we have a customer name is John Doe. Okay. This is his name, then the company name, billing address, okay, uh, notes, section. So all this is the data that we have for the John Doe. Okay. So we want to migrate some more data into the QuickBooks from the SQL Server. So uh, I have written an insert statement inserting the data into the customer table and the data will be inserted for the Michael, Michael Smith. Okay. So uh, let me insert a record into the customers table. Okay. And now we should have two records like one record for the John Doe and another record for the Michael T. Smith. Okay. So I want to insert the data for the Michael T. Smith. So maybe I can write where ID equal to and I can give this ID. Okay. So that only this particular record will be selected. You can also select the data maybe based on the create time. Okay. The most recent data. So we can do th that as well like order by meta data underscore create time okay desc and i can select top one record so suppose um, you can also select like only the data that was inserted today or something okay so or even you can migrate all data as well so it's up to you like how much data you want to migrate but right now i want to insert only one record because we have only two records in the customer table and one record is already at the QuickBooks site. Okay. So I can copy this particular query from here and there is one more thing that you need to insert the data only into the read write columns. You cannot insert the data into the read only columns. You can only insert into the read write columns. So if you want to know what are the read only columns and what are the read write columns. So you can check them at QuickBooks site and you can also take help from the chat GPT like you can ask from the chat GPT. Uh, what are the read write columns available in the customer table at the QuickBook? Okay. For example, I asked the chat GPT, can you give me a table name with read write columns in QuickBooks? So for the customer, these are the column names like display name, company name, primary email address, phone balance notes. It has not given the complete list, but there are some columns available. Okay. So uh, now we will be migrating the data from the SQL Server to QuickBooks. So I can rename this one as SQL Server to QuickBooks. Okay. And then because our source is the SQL Server, 
so we will be using the OLEDB source here and I can drag and drop the OLEDB source into data flow task then I can configure this one from data access mode I will write the SQL command and then I can copy this particular query from here I can paste the query so it will select only this one record from the SQL server table for the T Smith I can click OK now because we want to insert the data into the QuickBooks so I can type QuickBooks here and I can drag and drop the destination components here now I can map the OLEDB source with the QuickBook destination then I can configure this one from connection manager we will select the QuickBooks connection manager from component properties uh, we can actually select the table the customer table to which we want to insert the data to so I can select the table name here now I can go to the column mappings majority of the columns are read only columns so we can ignore the read only columns here okay uh, all these columns okay title column is good read write given name middle name family name suffix fully qualified name company name display name they are good now I can ignore these columns primary email address this is good this billing address line 1 2 3 they are good country subdivision code maybe I can ignore this one postal code is good node is good now these address columns are good okay all right so we have ignored the uh, column those were read only that I think that they were read only uh, I don't have the complete list as of now but I know that these are the read write co columns like the address columns shipping address column billing address column and the primary email address and the name column they are the read write columns okay so I think we should be good here and I can click ok so now when I will execute the package then it should migrate uh, one record from the SQL server side this person Michael Smith from SQL server into the QuickBooks because at the QuickBook level right now I have only one customer and which is John Doe okay so even if I refresh this one then there should be right now only one customer okay so let's see so the package is running right now you can see that the execution of the package is successful which is good now I can go back and now you can see that we got two customers Michael Smith that I just inserted so if I click on this one then it should have the data like the company name is Smith Enterprise I can check the company name yeah Smith Enterprise and uh, the address I can check is this one 123 Main Street Springfield USA okay yeah so this is the exact uh, you know the same address the same billing address you know that we migrated from SQL Server so you can see that the migration of data from QuickBooks to SQL Server or from SQL Server to QuickBooks it's so easy that you know uh, you simply need to just drag and drop few components and then you can just need to you know map the columns from source to destination and then you should be good to go so you don't need to write any code to migrate the data so if you want to try the devart component then you can download their trial version and it will be free for 30 days so i think that's it for today's video thank you guys for watching the video and if you like the video then please click the like button do subscribe to our channel press the bell icon and click on all so that you will be notified every time for the new video thank you so much